Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotorPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotorPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotorPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. After a week off, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series gets back on track at Talladega Super Speedway for the Geico 500 tomorrow afternoon. Um, the difference this week, we got a 2.66 mile Super Speedway. Um, formerly, we'd be calling this a plate track. That has changed a little bit. They don't use restrictor plates anymore. This will be the first race on a Super Speedway using the new tapered spacer. Um, what that has done, they're trying to reduce the speeds in the same way the restrictor plate is, just a little bit different setup. It's it's a conical shape um, in that plate, so the air goes through just a little bit better. And the one thing the drivers have been talking about a lot here so far through two practices and qualifying is throttle response. Um, talking about if you're, you get in a good run, you can really get up on the cars in front of you really fast. So I think we're going to see a lot of passing, a lot of good racing. Uh, guys in front aren't going to be able to hold the lead, I don't think, like we've seen at the Xfinity race today. Um, some drivers are even saying if you're going to be trying to block like that, you're probably going to wreck and be out of the race. So looks like we're probably going to see some crashing tomorrow, just being this the first race with this new rules package on a super speedway. Not really sure what's going to happen, so there's going to be a lot going on there. What we're going to be looking for from a strategy standpoint, same as usual with super speedways, we're going to be looking for drivers that start at the back. If they're able to get in a run and pass drivers very quickly, that just means that uh, place differential is definitely at a premium here this week, especially on DraftKings where it's worth just a little bit more. So we are going to get into the picks here. Um, some of the we'll have a quick look at the qualifying and practice. I'm not putting any weight really on practice this week because drivers, you know, they have doing different things. Some of them are out there in groups. Some of them were out there running single car runs. And as we kind of seen guys that were good in the single car qualifying. Some of them that that will be starting inside the top 10 were down and outside the top 20 in practices. So I'm not really taking a lot from the practice. Um, it was more of a learning thing, I think, for a lot of the teams out there. So mostly what I'm going to be looking at, and I haven't got it quite adjusted in here yet, is practice to qualifying differential. I'm going to put a whole bunch of weight on that as well and get this down to 100. So as you can see, this is how I am going about. I'll go back there. This weighted average, I want to get it down to 100. So definitely want to look at form, uh, get that track type, type history down a little bit. Just things are a little bit different and the career track history. So I'm probably going to go there, 30% weight on track history over the last two years. I really like the qualifying to practice differential. The guys that are starting back in the pack that were maybe showed some speed in practice. Um, Kyle Busch comes to mind there right at the top. But there is a lot of them, as you can see, down this qualifying column here that are starting towards the back. So I think that's going to be the strategy this week is out of the six drivers in your lineup, maybe looking at about four of them starting outside the top 20, uh, more GPP would be going maybe just three or uh, just two. But I think place difference is going to be huge where you need at least um, four or five of those drivers uh, starting outside the top 20 who are going to get that place differential. And then it's pretty much a roll of dice who's not going to get caught up in the wrecks to get through to the end. So it feels like a, it's going to be one where I'm going to make probably 20 to 50 lineups um, just to cover my bases, um, go with my core drivers, and then build a second core. I'm probably going to have, um, I'll be talking about in some strategy stuff coming down the line, but running with like three different cores this week and then just mixing and matching in drivers. So my player pool at a race like this. Um, a Talladega Daytona is, is always a little bit bigger, um, so I'm looking at a lot more drivers in the player pool because, I mean, guys like David Reagan have done well. We've seen a lot of lower-end teams do really well here, um, whether they're finishing top 10, top 5, or even winning this thing sometimes. So definitely something to look at. Some of those lower-end drivers helps to build your Stars and Scrubs lineups.
So a couple drivers that stand out. I mentioned Kyle Busch, not great at plate racing, not great here at Talladega, but he started in 22nd and he showed top 10 speeds. Um, so I'm definitely looking at him as an option here this week, um, just because that is expensive um, to build around. Like I said, there's a lot of low end guys that we can look at as well. Um, Martin Truex Jr. starting 20th, showed some speed there. So again, looking at that uh, place differential. Um, going ahead and looking at uh, Joey Logano and Brad Kozlowski are probably going to be my, the top two guys I'll be looking at this week to build around uh, Logano. They've won five of the last seven races here. Six of the last eight, I believe it has been at Talladega. They've been very good on plate tracks. They've been very good so far this year. So definitely going to be looking at them. They are starting eighth and fourth. So that's a little bit more contrarian if you were to stack those two guys together starting inside the top ten. But chances are they're going to be inside that top five at the end provided they don't get in a wreck. They didn't show much in practice but again I'm not looking at that practice times. I'm kind of looking at guys that are good at play tracks, good at Talladega and are starting back in the pack giving us some place differential upside as well. And then of course Forum got one guys that are that are doing quite well. So. Denny Hamlin pops um, in the model as well. He's starting 23rd, so he gives us a lot of place differential value. Add to that, he's also been very good here at Talladega. We'll just go look at uh, him here from uh, racingreference.info. Uh, 4th, 14th, 6th, 11th, 3rd, so he's been consistent here. A um, couple top fives in that time as well, so definitely looking at him. He's good at plate tracks. Won the Daytona 500 so far this year, so um, definitely looking at him. Kurt Busch starting 14th. Stands out. He's not been the best on the plate tracks, but he's been he's been better at Talladega than Daytona. Starting 14th, so that's about middle of the pack. Um, so if you went with like four drivers starting outside the top 20, and then one that's starting just outside the top 10 and 20 in between there, and then one inside the top 10, I think that's a good line of construction. When you're looking at cash games this week, Kurt Busch fits that mold at 9K. A couple drivers I think are maybe a little bit too cheap that I'll be looking at. Um, Eric Almarola on DraftKings at 8100. He is excellent at Talladega. As you can see, he's the number one driver here over the last two years. He won this race uh, in the playoffs last year. He's good on plate tracks in general. He's starting second, but I think he's a driver that could, you know, lead a few laps. Um, although I think we're going to see, you know, probably 10 plus lap leaders in this race. I think he's one that could probably get up closest to that 50. Just being he's been so good here, good in the draft. And he's only 8,100, so he's someone that I would consider inside the top 10 as one of my top guys starting inside the top 10 this week. Austin Dillon showed speed throughout the weekend. Good on plate tracks, good here at Talladega. Starting on the pole, which is kind of scary, so that's more of a GPP play this week. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he's been excellent here at Talladega as well, as you can see. Um, good on the plate tracks. He's won over since the start of 2017. He's won at both Daytona and Talladega. Um, he's had some four of his last five starts here have been top fives at Talladega. So definitely looking at him starting six. I think he could be there at the end, provided he doesn't get in a wreck too. Um, like I said, these guys are starting inside the top ten. Maybe a little bit better plays on FanDuel. Um, more of a GPP play when you're looking at DraftKings. But I don't usually play cash on these high variance tracks like this. Anyway, so I'm looking at GVP, so these are all guys that are going to be in my GVP player pool this week. Looking at a couple other guys, I don't mind Matt Benedetto starting 26th in new uh, different equipment here this year. Hasn't been terrific at Talladega, um, but starting 26th, I'll definitely consider him. William Byron, he showed some speed in practice. Uh, Hendrick seems to be a team that does get together well um, in the draft, so definitely looking at stacking them as well. That's something that you can definitely do. We talked about this at Daytona 500, is stacking teammates just because of the draft, so you get your um, Logano and Kozlowski together, um, just finding your teams. And you can find that on my sheet, just going to the entry list. I've sorted it by manufacturer, and then I sorted it by team, so you can easily find guys that are on the same team or guys that are driving the same type of car. So definitely check that out if you are working on stacks. Some cheap guys looking at this week. Um, David Reagan was definitely on my radar early in the week. Not really liking that he started in 15th. I definitely will have a little bit, but not as much as I had originally hoped. Um, definitely looking at some of these guys lower down. I think we can uh, um, attack them as well. Like, say, like a Corey LaJoy can get in there. Michael McDowell, he's starting 12, so that's, that's you know, probably like a 1%, 2% kind of play in your player pool. Bubba Wallace. Um, you can pretty much make a combination of two or three of any of these guys down here. Um, Matt Tiff started 18th. I, he showed a lot of speed. I was kind of hoping he started further back, but I think I will have still have some of him starting 18th. 
he could definitely pop into the top 10. We could see him there as well. Showed uh, that he can really get in there and and get in that draft well, like he showed in practice. Both of the practices, he was 15th in the first one, and then he was fourth in that second practice. So it was really good to see there as well. So I will look at the practice speeds. Um, but like I said, when you're looking at the practice speed and some of the guys that, that qualified top 10, I'm not panicking to see like a guy like Brad Kozlowski up here who qualified fourth, but he was 33rd and, and 21st in practice. So not really worried about that. But some of these lower end guys, I like to see some speed in their cars, these lower end teams. So Matt Tiff definitely stands out there as well. That covers all the drivers here for this week, um, kind of my core. I will have a few more. Like I said, I open my player up, player pool up quite a bit. So if you have any questions, definitely hit me up at dfsr.com in the members chat, over at Roller Pros in our community chat, or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs9. And with that, let me make sure to like and subscribe the video. Let's go make some lineups for tomorrow's race. Get some green screens. Good luck.